So Donna Tumbakar Esteban, she's, an, she's into embodiment, energy management, and womb wisdom guide. So Donna guides people in awakening through their bodies, conceiving and birthing expanded versions of themselves. She does these through the embodiment practices, energy management for corporations, and an embodied approach to women's well-being, which she shares extensively in Asia and Europe. Donna weaves somatic movements and the yoga from the feminine aspect inspired by her mentor and elder, Angela Farmer, an indigenous wisdom, embodiment, and practical spiritual spirituality specific to the different phases of feminine energy and hormonal cycle. Donna envisions circles of women harmonizing their external environment with their internal cycles and stepping into the evolutionary leadership to enrich their respective communities. So excited to listen to Donna. And Donna, your topic for today is wisdom of our womb and deep feminine leadership. Over to you, Don. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, first of all. I just want to extend my deep, deep gratitude to, to Mataji, to Dr. Yugandar, and to the whole community of the World United. I also extend deep gratitude to my teachers and to my ancestors. They are here with us today. Thank you. Thank you. Ah, I feel very, very honored and humbled to be in the company of everybody here. And of course, to all those who are listening. Today, I will speak about deep feminine leadership and the wisdom of our womb. I will start with a story and perhaps guide us through some practices. And, and really to look at how the feminine can really rise up and how our divine masculine can also be open to receive. And in that way, from this oneness comes diversity and then unity, coming back to that oneness. So let me tell you a story. This story comes from from my country, the Philippines. It is the story of the Tagalog deity, the Tagalog goddess named Mayari. A long, long time ago, there was Bathala, the supreme being. And Bathala went into a deep slumber without leaving an heir to the world. And so in his deep slumber, Apolaki, one of his sons, so he had many sons and he had many daughters, but one son, Apolaki, decides, okay, I will be the sole leader of the world. Now, one of his daughters, Mayari, Mayari, stood up and said, wait a minute, we should be co-leaders of the world. This did not, uh, this was not received very well by Apolaki because Apolaki really believed that he should be the sole leader. And so he decided to wage a war against Mayari. And Mayari knowing her place, you see Mayari knows her place in this world. And she was not afraid to take that place, to take that stand as a co-leader. And so she said, okay, Let's have a war. And so in battle, and they battled. Apolaki battling for his sole leadership, Mayari battling for her co-leadership. In that process, Apolaki injures Mayari and takes out one of her eyes. Upon seeing what he had done, upon seeing what he had done, Apolaki was filled with deep remorse. It's almost as if he had woken up 
And with this awakening, he goes to Mayari, offers his apology, and finally says, yes, let us be co-leaders. Now, this myth is said to be the, the origin of night and day. You see, Apolaki still had his two eyes, so he became the leader during daytime. And Mayari, with her one eye, okay, became the leader of the nighttime. And she, and, and I, I just want to point this out because I've contemplated on this myth. There's not much research or, you know, there's very little on this myth. I really have been able to sit down with this for a long time. And I want to share with you a simple prayer that I wrote to invoke the goddess Mayari. And I, I would love for you to close your eyes and really feel this inside of you because in each of us, there is a, an Apolaki and there is a Mayari. I call on her the warrior goddess, the goddess of the moon of beauty and strength of equality and justice. I call on Mayari, the one with two different eyes, one eye seeing in and the other seeing out. I call on her for courage to stand and fight for what is right. When Apolaki, her brother, claimed sole leadership of the land after their father, Bathala, passed without leaving an heir. She stood her ground and fought for her place as an equal and able co-leader. In battle, she lost an eye. Upon seeing what he had done, in deep remorse, he realized his rightful place, apologized and offered shared leadership, him during the day and her at night. I call on Mayari for her capacity to forgive Apolaki and accept his apology and peace offering without ill feelings, without retaliation. She took her rightful place and moved forward in peace. May she grant us her two eyes for clear vision one for the dark and one for the light. May she bestow upon us the courage to stand our ground. May she endow us with wisdom to know when it is time for war and when it is time for peace. May she fill us with the capacity for forgiveness. May she bring balance to the masculine and feminine aspects within us so we can live in wholeness and may she bequeath, with us, bequeath us with strength to take leadership for our own lives in service to the world. This for me is at the root of deep feminine leadership. The feminine and the masculine, it's not about gender, it's not about sex, these are qualities that are deep inside of us. Now, there are four qualities that I have been contemplating on today as I prepared for this. Uh, and what has come up for me in my meditation today is really the quality of receptivity, a very deep feminine quality, the quality of receiving. We receive information from the cosmic lane, bringing it down into matter so that we can give birth to diversity. And this diversity now creates this new wholeness, one that is upon us right now. From information to formation. The deep feminine is about rhythm. As women, we go through the moon cycle, our menstrual cycle. We go through the cycle of conception all the way to birth. There is deep creativity inside our bodies. And it's not just about creativity. Um, creating new humans, but creating new visions, creating new worlds. 
whether it's through projects, through your, your jobs. Um, yeah, the little things, even cooking, for example. There is also a deep respect for timing. Nature's rhythms are slow to moderate. And if we go against this inside a human, uh, inside a woman's body, we feel it. We really feel it. And it comes out. It comes out, for example, let's bring it to practical spirituality. The imbalances begin to manifest, for example, in challenges or difficulties during our period, our, our menstruation. When we go against the flow of our cyclical wisdom, of the hormonal dance that is happening in our bodies every month, then we feel it. And this also allows us to really connect, to connect to the rhythms of nature, of the earth, our great mother, the great womb. We feel it. We need to be more sensitive to it. And there is also a deep reverence, a reverence for mystery the unknown, the deep feminine. For me, there is the yin and the yang, and these two come together. Yeah. And sometimes, and I'm guilty of this as well, sometimes I fail to see the whole that wraps these two together. So we have the duality that creates all of these diversities, and then we have the wholeness that wraps these two together. So we have the mystery and we also have mastery. So imagine a life where we can have both mystery, that deep reverence for mystery, as we also gain mastery. Now, from a practical perspective, how do we now get in touch with this deep feminine? And I'm not just speaking to women. I'm speaking to humans. I'm speaking to everyone, all our relations. From a practical perspective, we can connect deeply with our womb, our wise womb. So for us women, we do have wombs. And so we can connect deeply to that by being aware of our cycles, being aware of our monthly cycle and living according to this. There is time for rest. There is time for an externalization of energy. There is a time for full expression and receptivity. And there is also time for going inward and then going back deeply inward during your blood phase. And then starting the cycle all over again. And this we can see, we can see in nature. But even if we don't have a womb, the energy is there. We can connect to the earth. The, in the Philippines, we have a word for the womb, sinapupunan. And sinapupunan is not just the yoni space. It's not just that. It's, it includes the lap and the breasts, yeah. the parts of us that nourish. And we can connect deeply with the sinapupunan, with the womb of the earth, even though we don't have wombs. Really, we can contemplate on this. Contemplation is key. Our inner experience is key. So um, to close, I want to invite everybody. Yeah. I am hearing an echo. Is it possible to mute the echo? Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I would like to invite everybody to close. Uh, I would like to invite everybody to in, in a small meditation, okay? And you can do this sitting down and using visualization. Or if you have space, I would love to invite you to also move if you can. So let us begin by bringing one hand to our womb space. And for the men, you can put it on your hara, or you can also, if possible, really connect to the earth. You can put your hand, remembering that wherever you are on earth, you are directly seated in the center of the earth, the womb of the mother. So we do have that connection. 
Uh, for women, you can also do a yoni mudra and put it on your womb space. And then close the eyes. Connect deeply inside. Bringing your attention to that space in your womb. Now imagine that your sitting bones are connecting to the earth, rooting to the earth. Dropping your roots, your sitting bones, connecting deeply into the womb of the mother. Knowing that in the center of the earth, the womb of the mother, we are all connected. Unity, oneness, even in our diverse expression. And from this womb of the mother, imagine that she is nourishing you through her roots all the way back into your womb space. Now, during our blood phase, this is a time for rest. Our blood phase endows us with a power of releasing, releasing what is no longer needed, and also the power to visualize what we wish to bring into the new cycle. This is a time for great rest, for contemplation, a very sacred time. Now, as we come out of the blood phase, we begin now to feel our energy rising. And in the body, this happens when estrogen begins to rise. And you can bring one hand to your heart space, keeping the other to your womb, connected to your womb. And begin to feel that rising energy inside of you. This phase of the cycle, the waxing part of the cycle, is the power of possibilities. And if you wish, you can even embody that, feel that rising energy coming into your heart, coming out of your hands, remembering that the hands and arms are connections, branches of the heart. And then we move into our ovulation, opening up fully in full expression and receptivity. And you can bring your hands up while connected deeply into the womb of the mother through the roots of your sitting bones, you can begin to express. Arms are up, opening. The power of ovulation is all about expression, openness, and receptivity. And after ovulation, the energy begins to move back in. To feel that energy moving back into your heart space. This is the power of resolution. The power of completion. Coming back in. Now bringing your hands once again to the womb space. Or to the womb of the mother. We come back into the blood phase, a time for rest, a time for contemplation. Let's just take a moment here, receiving the breath, Allowing the breath to come into our body, noticing how the breath is traveling through our body, the life force, and how our body is receiving this breath. And at the end of the next breath, I invite you to slowly and gradually open your eyes. And when we open our eyes, we can have the eyes of Mayari, 
one eye looking in and one eye looking out. Imagine that if we can live our lives, one eye looking in, one eye looking out. So I wanna close this with a call to action. How can we truly connect to this deep feminine? Can we educate our daughters, beginning with ourselves, not just women, but also the men as human beings? Can we share with our daughters the beauty and the sacredness of the cycles? And all of these have implications. We don't have time to really um, unpack all of the implications in terms of how we can live our lives according to our cycles. We can do that next time, maybe a full on workshop on it. But for now, the invitation here is to track your cycle and to mind your flow. Notice what comes up for you. Become your own inner teacher. Your wise womb is waiting. Your wise womb is waiting. So rise up, sisters. Open up, brothers. We are one. And with that, thank you very much. Thank you so much, Donna. For this thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you and welcome. Thank you, Mataji. Thank you. You took us through a very beautiful divine femi feminine experience to, for all the women as well as the men that the divine womb is waiting. So that was a beautiful message. Thank you so much, Donna. Small token of our appreciation for this beautiful experience that you've given us. And this is what we could do on the digital platform. The World United Presence, World Parliament on Spirituality 3, a certificate of appreciation from the World United to Dona Tumbakdar Esteven for being an esteemed presenter in the third edition of World Parliament on Spirituality 2020. Thank you for your time. And thank you for sharing your wonderful wisdom to everybody. Thank you, Dona. Thank you, Bahalat.